Welcome back to another episode. Today I'm gonna review the Pioneer CLD A100 laser disc player slash laser active video game system plus some of the games that I have for this system. And let's go. The A100 was developed by Pioneer and released in 1993 in Japan and the United States at a retail price of 970 US dollars. And what you got was a very good laser disc player that allowed you to play laser disc movies and audio CDs. Now, for everybody who doesn't know about the medium laser disc, this is a laser disc. This is actually the only laser disc movie that I have. The Shadow, awesome movie in my opinion. A lot of people don't like this movie, but for me it's one of my favorite uh, superhero movies. Okay, the laser disc was a predecessor of today's DVD, developed in the 1970s, and as far as I know, it was released almost worldwide. The laser disc was superior to the VHS. Um, the picture quality was slightly better, the sound quality was much more better and uh, the Laserdisc was the first one to feature surround sounds like Dolby Digital and also DTS. Also some of the movies had uh, bonus material like a making of or the runtime was longer on the Laserdisc because they had scenes that were normally cut out and that you would find on today's DVDs under missing scenes or the extended version of a movie. Laserdiscs don't have a menu like today's DVDs but they also have chapters that you could select instead of fast forwarding to a specific scene. Now despite all those enhancements it still had some flaws. Number one, scratches. Same thing like today with DVDs, uh, audio CDs and other CD-ROMs. If the Laserdisc has scratches then it skips scenes or has reading problems. Then number two, um, laser rot, which is a chemical breakdown that creates stains on the laser disc and that results in the same skipping or reading problems or it can even destroy the laser disc. There is nothing that you can do or that you could do to prevent the laser disc to get laser rot because it actually happened during the manufacturing. Then number three, the runtime of a laser disc. Almost every laser disc, and I'm talking about the movies, have video material on both sides. The, uh, a laser disc can contain uh, between 30 to 60 minutes of video, of video material on one side. So uh, at a certain point at the movie you would have to change the side to continue watching the whole movie. Except you had a laser disc player that had a moving uh, laser because those could play both sides. But a lot of um, movies uh, on laser disc came on two laser discs or three or four. And uh, yeah, even if you had one of those uh, laser disc players that, uh, that had a moving um, laser, you would also have to get up and change the disc to watch the whole movie. And number four. It was expensive. Laser disc player were expensive and also laser discs. And yeah, I'm, I don't give any examples because I'm actually not that familiar with uh, laser discs. But as far as I know, you would have to pay about twice as much for a laser disc than for the VHS version of a movie. And yeah. The Laserdisc in the end didn't catch on in Europe. It did better in the United States and also in Canada. And yeah, it did actually pretty well in Japan and yeah, this was a short version of the history of uh, the Laserdisc medium, but now let's come back to the CLDA100 review. Now what made the CLDA100 unique was the expansion slot on the front, right here. This expansion slot allows you to use the so-called control packs. A couple of different control packs were released for this player. The one that I have is the most common one. It's the PACS10 released by Sega in the United States. On the front it has a cartridge slot 
and two 9-pin control ports and on the back you have the interface to connect the pack to the laser disc player. And you only have to slide it into the expansion slot. But make sure that it locks into the laser disc player. And also make sure that the laser disc player isn't powered on when you insert the control pack or when you eject the control pack. And now the CLD A100 laser disc player has transformed into the laser active video game system capable of playing the American Sega Genesis games, the American Sega CD games and also the Mega LD laser active games. The same pack was also released in Japan under the name PACS1 and with that you can play Japanese Sega Mega Drive games, Japanese Sega Mega CD games and also the Mega LD laser active games. The laser active games are region free and in almost every game you can choose the language in the options between Japanese and English. Both control packs also included the 6 button Sega Genesis slash Mega Drive controller with the laser active logo on it. But you can also use the normal or I would say the original Sega Genesis 3 button controller and also any other controller with a 9 pin port. But Sega wasn't the only company that made hardware and software for the laser active. Also NAC made games and control packs. In America they released the PACN10 which allows you to play TurboGrafx-16 hook card games, these ones, then also the TurboGrafx-16 CD-ROM games, also the TurboGrafx-16 Super CD-ROM games, also the PC Engine CD-ROM games and also the PC Engine Super CD-ROM games and the LD-ROM 2 Laser Active games. The same control pack was also released in Japan called the PACN1 and with this one you can play also the LD-ROM 2 laser active games because they are also region free. Then the PC Engine uh, hook card games, the PC Engine CD-ROM games, the PC Engine Super CD-ROM games and also the TurboGrafx-16 CD-ROM games and Super CD-ROM games. There was also a third uh, control pack from NEC which is called the PCE LP1. It is identical to the PACN1 and as far as I know it was uh, sold with the NAC PDELD1 which was the same laser disc player as the CLD A100. The only difference was that it was made by NEC and the color of the player was dark grey instead of black. All the NEC control packs included a TurboGrafx-16 slash PC Engine controller with the laser active logo on it. Each control pack from Sega and NEC had a retail price of 600 US dollars. Then there were also two other packs released for the CLD A100. The karaoke pack PACK1 that makes the laser disc player become a karaoke machine and lets you play karaoke laser discs and audio CDs. And the last pack was the computer interface pack PACPC1 which allows you to connect the laser disc player to a PC or Mac computer and it also came with the software to create laser active software and with a bigger remote than the original one. Both packs had a retail price of 350 US dollars. Since I mentioned the remote, the CLD A100 also came with a remote which I don't have, but I bought this one which has the same buttons or features like the original one and it also works. I got this tip from a very good friend of mine that you can use almost every Pioneer LaserDisc remote on other Pioneer LaserDisc players. 
If you don't have a remote for the CLD A100, but you have one of the control packs from Sega or NAC, then you can also use the controller as a remote. Okay, next let's take a closer look at the CLD A100. We start on the front left. Over here we have the big power button. Then next to it is the pack release button, which pushes the control pack a little bit out, but you also should, should use um, the right hand to, uh, yeah, to slide it out. Then next to it is the play and pause button. Then let's just power it on. Then over here we have the reset button, then those buttons open the trays. You have CD and uh, laser disc. Let's open up the audio CD tray. Let's just close it. And now the laser disc tray. And let's close that. On the bottom right over here we have the volume controller for the headphones, then here is the headphone jack and the digital memory button. I'm actually not 100% sure for uh, what you can do with this button or this feature. As far as I know, there are some Laserdisc movies that had this feature and with this button you could uh, use those features. But like, like I said before, I don't really know what you can do with this button. Okay, let's turn it off and now we come to the back of the CLD A100. The power cable is hardwired to the CLD A100. Then over here you have control in and out to composite video out, DC out, audio mono out and four composite audio out, two for the right and two for the left and over here you have optical digital out for surround sound. And those three, the second video out, DC out and audio mono out uh, were used for a VHF adapter and the adapter was called ADP-1. And with this adapter you could uh, connect uh, 3D goggles that were released for the CLD A100. The 3D goggles were called GOL1. And on this adapter you had two, um, two ports uh, for the 3D goggles. And actually the adapter was sold separately to the 3D goggles. So, in order to use the 3D goggles, you would also have to buy the adapter. And yeah, I actually don't know how much uh, the retail price was of the 3D goggles and also the adapter. So, now finally we take a look at the games that I have for the Laser Active. 